The White House released the President's 2026 discretionary funding request on Friday. In order to beat China back to the moon, it forfeits the highest priority goal of planetary science by terminating the U.S.-led Mars sample return mission on this episode of Mars Guy. In December 2008, NASA commissioned the National Academy of Sciences to produce a report on the priorities for its planetary science program. Known as a decadal survey, it was intended to provide recommendations to NASA for its planetary science activities in the years 2013 to 2022. The highest priority recommendation was for NASA to take the first critical steps toward returning carefully selected samples from the surface of Mars. This became the Perseverance rover mission, which was sent to a location chosen for its geologic diversity and potential to host evidence of ancient Martian life. The campaign to return Mars samples was again recommended in the Decadal Survey for 2023 to 2032. The exploration of Jezero Crater, the site of a lake more than 3 billion years ago, has been remarkably successful, with Perseverance and its team carefully selecting nearly 30 rock samples that will likely revolutionize our understanding of the climatic and geologic history of Mars. Here's Mars Guy for scale. Even more profound is that some of the samples contain organic matter and chemical alteration that could be evidence for life. But unless these samples are returned to labs on Earth, this can't be proven one way or the other, and the revolution in planetary science will be stalled. Another consequence is that the toxicity of Martian dust, a very real possibility, will not be known before the eventual arrival of humans who will inevitably be exposed to this ubiquitous material. Meanwhile, the Chinese Space Agency has had its own remarkable successes, putting a satellite in orbit around Mars and landing and operating a rover on the surface, all on its first attempt in the same year as Perseverance arrived. These successes have given rise to an ambitious plan for a new mission that will collect and return Mars samples to Earth. China's commitment to this plan was evident in March with an announcement of opportunities for international collaboration on additional payloads to be flown on the mission. I'll note that China's mission probably won't have access to comparably compelling samples as those collected by Perseverance because of engineering constraints that limit where it can land and the limited mobility options it will have. The president's budget request cuts NASA funding by 24%. That's $6 billion less than the nearly $25 billion it received in the 2025 budget. The largest cuts, more than $2 billion, come from the space science side of NASA, while preserving over $7 billion for lunar exploration and introducing a billion dollars in new investments for Mars-focused programs. No details were provided for what those programs are, but Mars sample return is not among them, which is now viewed as, quote, grossly over budget and whose goals would be achieved by human missions to Mars, end quote. The additional statement that the samples would not be returned until the 2030s appears to suggest that human missions will come before that. Note, though, that there is nothing in the current moon-to-Mars architecture, let alone in the president's budget, that would have humans on Mars in the 2030s. NASA is the world's preeminent space agency and a source of American pride, in large part because of the incredible success and diversity of its space science missions. Returning humans to the moon is a necessary step toward safely sending humans on to Mars, but it's not a necessary step toward maintaining preeminence in space. NASA already proved it could safely land humans on the moon more than 50 years ago, decades before China even had a space agency. Now the president's budget forfeits the highest priority planetary science goal to China but only if the U.S. Congress agrees.